let's proceed to the latitude so guys latitude was quite unfortunate this has happened back in march 2023 the investigation is still on the uh, it's still in progress so, so i would say it's still unidentified who exactly done the attack it's still under investigation but the the attack type is based on identity theft and ransom uh, the data breach is around PII, personal identifying information, and the cause of the breach is the stolen credential. So technically, one of the internal systems got breached and allowing the bad actors to steal employees login and use one of the employees uh, credential to, to get their hand to the data. Again, we just talked about the zero trust architecture so what zero trust architecture is saying is never trust always verify it doesn't mean that we do not trust our employees we can we a lot of a lot of the organization they do trust their employees however how about if the employee credential is is getting compromised right how about if the bad actors is getting their hand to to the credentials of your employees then what's going to happen it's not about not having the trust to your people. It's you just can't fully trust the whole digital environment. That was the case here, which has caused one of the biggest Australian data breaches. This one is really big, actually. If you look at the impact, it's about 14 million customers' data, right? 7.9 million Australian and New Zealand driver license and 53,000 passport numbers. So out of 14 million, so around 8 million, they, they, they got their driver license compromised. So if you, are, if you have ever had any kind of finance from Latitude, let, let's say you, you purchased something from JB Hi-Fi and Latitude has been financing you, or you have a loan with them, you do need to change your driver license. If you've been with Latitude, this is not the same case as Optus. Optus, a previous, I did a case study last time, I said, look guys, the, the card number has not been compromised. But in this case, that's the driver license. They got a copy of your driver license, which means they have your driver license number and the card number. So they, ju they just need your Medicare or passport number to do the impersonation, right? On top of that, additional 6.1 million customer data uh, were stolen, include the different type of information such as date of birth, date of birth and uh, address, phone number. So if you look at the whole thing, even it got escalated quite significantly, which our cyber security minister, he had to bring together the government agencies to provide support in relation to this attack. They have asked for ransom. In this case, all right, so when there is a ransom, it can have, the, 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 the attackers can take two different approach. They can put a malware in your environment to encrypt your data. Then they can ask money to, to give you the decryption key. Or, and or, they take a copy of your data and they say, look, we're gonna re release the data in dark web if you don't pay us. Which is, the, in this case, that was the second case. They didn't encrypt the data. That, the, the next case study that we are doing for Colonial Pipeline, they did encrypt the data. So basically, the, the service provider, they haven't had access to the data, but in this case, they didn't encrypt the data. They got a copy of it, but they said they were demanding ransom for not releasing the data in, on dark way, which in this case, Latitude, they have already confirmed that they are not paying the ransom, which is the right thing. We don't wanna, we don't wanna uh, finance the, the hackers and the bad actors. So basically, if Latitude pay them, they have more money to do more damages to the other organizations. So unfortunately, as I said, a lot of these data breaches comes with legal implications. So there is a class action the, a class action has been launched against Latitude Finance. That's quite unfortunate. So, but that and the, the investigation is if they have had enough and right security controls in place to protect their customers' data. So, even if you look at the Privacy Act, the amount of fine it used to be around two million, but right now it goes around 50 million so for a lot of the organization yeah paying 2 million it's okay but 50 million 
it's not the same amount. So the amount of fine has been increased to 50 million or some in some cases it can go above and beyond 50 million up to one third of the revenue of the organization. So it's quite important for organizations to take this serious because A, when it comes to financial damage, if you look at the Optus case, they ended up with spending around 140 million. It's not only because of the fine, but also because of the money they had to pay to, they had to fund people re changing their driver license, in some cases changing their passwords or getting their credit check, all that sort of thing, they are funding it. So the financial damage could be quite significant. So, so far the, 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 the amount of financial damage is around 53 million for latitude and also uh, yeah, so they, they are really encouraging people to, to reach out to Australia's credit reporting agencies. So, so you can, there are, there are a few Australian uh, reporting agencies such as Equifax or um, Experian or Centrix. You can reach out to these guys and ask for a credit report and see if you've been, uh, your credit report has been compromised and or has been kind of, you have got any negative impact on your credit report, anyone is trying to get a loan on there, because if you see your credit score is really low, it means, okay, maybe someone is trying to impersonate you guys, getting the loan and all that sort of things. So yeah, it, that, that was quite big, 14 million, too many people, as I said before, like 14 million Latitude Finance, 10 million Optus, 9.8 9 million Medibank, 1.5 million good guys. How many people do we have in Australia? 25 million. So pretty much everyone is kind of compromised right now. Everyone's personal identifying information is somehow available on dark web to, to, the, to the extent. So it's quite important to keep an eye on that. So the, the best, the teachable takeaway, I can't stress enough how important it is to have multi-factor authentication, two-factor authentication within your organization. A lot of the time, the multi-factor authentication, it's one important security control, which a lot of the time can protect your environment up to 80%. It's quite important to have the robust data retention and disposal policies. We have discussed that before. And also it's quite important to have enhanced network monitoring and anomaly detection within your environment. That, that, that even quite important for the good guys they should have had. So they follow, follow the zero trust and also doing an ongoing uh, threat assessment and uh, security testing. I kind of stress enough how important it is to do an ongoing security testing. So it's cyber security technologies and evolving world. We are adopting new technologies every day. We are making a lot of changes within our environment. So security testing, it's an ongoing thing. It doesn't mean that if you've done penetration testing a year ago, it's good enough. No, do it every three months, do it every six months, right? It has to be an ongoing. Vulnerability assessment report has to be in daily basis. Whenever you come up with new application, if you do your coding, do the SAS and DAS testing, you really need to adopt the DevSecOp, DevSecOp operation and the process to ensure you are doing all the security testing across your codes and applications. So it's quite important to follow those kind of things. Thank you.